I like using this Squadro braid. This is made by Montelit. It's a really tiny blade and it allows you to get closer to these corners. little bit of lippage on this back edge here because the membrane is pushing this tile out. I'm just going to take my grinder and grind down the back of the tile. So these don't have to be really super accurate since I'm going to be putting a toilet flange around here that has plenty of room. So I'm just going to use these tile nippers. It's just to continue with that little curve around the tub. So as you can see, it's like a cone shape. That'll provide a nice curve on this. A polishing pad on here and I just want to polish this up a little bit so scribe cutting is really just a matter of taking your grinder blade and then just fine-tuning it so and that's probably just enough that's all that I need to uh, adjust that bottom thing just so I can have enough space for a horseshoe shim So one of the issues with high gloss tile, especially cheap high gloss tile, is that you get little tiny chips on the edges of your tile. Now it might not be noticeable to most, I don't even know if it'll come up here on camera, but it's just ever so slight and it kind of drives me nuts. So what I recommend is using a diamond hand pad and basically just going right along that edge and smoothing that out. So that's all it takes, it takes the sharpness away. And it also takes those little tiny bumps off of the edges of your tile. This little three and three eighths inch blade really allows really thin and it created the least amount of uh, vibration eliminating cracking that tile. This is basically coping, so I'm just going to take all that brown off and just keep that little divot going towards the top here. So if you haven't uh, cut perfectly around your shower light, you can use one of these milling bits. So there's two different types. One's just like a straight 3 8 inch kind of rod with all these diamonds on it. And then you have your cone shaped one. So either one works, but it's great to have them on a grinder. Now I'll be able to shape up this. Now this is ceramic, so it's gonna be really easy to do that with. Porcelains are definitely a lot more dense, so but this is definitely makes it easy, especially for these recessed lights. They gotta be pretty accurate for this to clip in right. Well, hey everyone, thanks for meeting me on this live stream tonight. So towel cutting, this is a big pain point for a lot of DIYers, a lot of even contractors that do tile. And sometimes this is why some people avoid doing bathroom remodeling because they don't want to get into the towel work. So 
Uh, thanks so much for being here tonight. Give me a like on this video as you come in here. I know that was a long intro, but I wanted to show you a whole bunch of different methods of going about cutting tile. And that's what this whole live stream is going to be about, is discussing more about tile cutting because I know it's a big pain point. I actually did a uh, survey here on YouTube the other day, and uh, a whole bunch of you have uh, outlined that layout is the toughest part for you. So, and that's, you know, I'm also really trying to tackle that for you but that's always up to the type of design that you actually choose and do. And hopefully I'll eventually have all the different layouts and all the different strategies to help you out with that. But the second thing that was a pretty big pain point was actually cutting tile. So that's what we're gonna discuss tonight. I'm really excited to get into this. Um, you know, and it's just something that over years uh, of uh, accumulating tools and trying new things out, uh, and I actually do have a, a new tile saw. You can actually probably see it in the background here that I'm going to be, uh, I won't be done demonstrating live, but I uh, am going to go over my thoughts about it so far. Uh, and again, it's just a matter, like there's so many new blades and so many more affordable things coming out these days that are making things a lot easier for all of us. So, um, <clears throat> but again, please give me a like on this video, it helps out the algorithm, gets out there. And if you guys don't know me, my name is Steve and I've been a contractor in the Pittsburgh area since 2000 and been specializing in bathrooms since roughly about 2008. So I've got quite a few years under my belt. I've done probably at least 100 bathrooms and uh, tile cutting has always been one of the, can be one of the biggest challenges. And there, just be aware that there are some tiles out there that no matter what kind of equipment you have or is gonna, is gonna uh, chip on you. And a lot of that unfortunately is the cheaper, harder, dense porcelains that are out there. So keep that in mind, it's not always, um, you know, the installer's fault for having different chips and stuff. Sometimes it is just the tile itself. But I wanted to show you where we're at right now. So if you've been watching my live streams, you know I'm kind of building this bath basement bathroom out in real time. And I'm just, you know, basically highlighting everything in my course and sharing videos with you on the entire installation. So it's really starting to look like a bathroom now. We got our actual uh, vanity in with our wall-mounted sink faucet which really uh, I'm really pleased with I thought it was a really good buy I got it off at Amazon for 60 bucks I think is what it was and uh, it looks tremendous I, I was really happy with it and really I think in my future home that I that I um, build next I'll definitely have some wall mounted faucets because it's so easy to clean around these things and they just look really awesome as well too uh, and then we got our mirror in we got our light fixture in we got the the, the, the big thing was the um, shower doors so we used uh, the Vigo shower doors, slider glass doors, and they really turned out tremendous. I went with sliding because you don't, obviously you can see here, I don't have a whole lot of room. It's a 48 inch wide bathroom. So once you put your vanity in, you know, you've got about 18, 19 inches of working room in front of you. So having a swinging door would have not been compatible in this space, but very, very pleased with uh, the Vigo uh, shower door system. I thought it was great. I'll definitely be having some content out on that in the future. So, um, but yeah, we're finally getting here on the finish line. A couple more things that I got to do in here. Uh, really just uh, basically electrical. I ended up buying some uh, switches today that I put in. I got off of Amazon and, th and these were these uh, Wi-Fi type of uh, switches that I thought were going to be cool, but I can't get them to connect to the app correctly. And then you're supposed to manually be able to push them as well and they don't they don't turn on or turn off the light. So something's wrong with, uh, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes you can't get everything off of Amazon, that's gonna be good. But we did wanna have a little bit of a technology, you know, a little high tech in the bathroom, but maybe we'll just stick with their standard switches. But uh, yeah, let's get into uh, tonight's topic, which is really gonna be about towel cutting and about, uh, you know, basically some of the different tools and equipment that I use and we're going to use my course as usual as the guidance to do this. So if you guys are interested in uh, purchasing a course, it definitely supports my platform, but it'll definitely, I assure you, will save you time, money, and definitely some, a lot of frustration. And if you get into my DIY Geek membership, this is just incorporates all of my courses. I have seven courses in total, including this basement bathroom. And, uh, you know, one great thing about the membership is that you'll get all the future courses as well. So over time, it just becomes more valuable. And, you know, really, 
bathrooms are endless. There's just there's so many new trends coming out, so many different things to be able to try out and do. So each course kind of has its own plumbing configuration, its own electrical configuration, um, and its own kind of design. So we kind I kind of try to interlink this all together so that you can find all the answers because not everyone's going to have the same situation. And over time, hopefully, you know, I'll have uh, a, a big uh, portfolio of courses that will help you out. So again, check out the DIY Geek membership. Uh, right now, it's only $200. That's a one-time payment. You get it like for a lifetime, and you'll get all the future courses. Over time, this will just continue to increase in value because as I build out more courses, the higher the price will be. But anyways, that's enough with that. Um, but yeah, in the, in the basement bathroom course, we kind of go outline everything that we've gotten to this point. I'm still building out uh, the grouting and the other sections, but we go through the concrete floor, the framing, the heated flooring system that we put in here, the mud bed shower pan, because we went curbless and it makes a lot of sense just do a mud bed uh, shower pan when you're on a concrete subfloor. It's really one of the easiest ways to uh, create a curbless shower. And I really wanted to create the curbless shower because of the space uh, prohibited, the space that I have in here. If I would have had a curb here, it would have felt like it was even more enclosed. Now I know that the, the shower doors are kind of defining space and they're kind of confining things, but uh, having a curb that would protrude out another three inches uh, or maybe two inches on either side of that glass would have definitely made it a lot more troublesome. So I really wanted to go curbless and that's when we get into the mud bed on that. Uh, and then the shower faucet that we installed with the, the uh, exposed plumbing, that was just kind of like the jewelry of the bathroom. Uh, I go into the, you know, how to go about doing that and making sure that you put the rough ends in the right place. That's really important to, to make sure you have it in the right place. Go through my favorite vent fan. I did the uh, Panasonic vent fan. That seems to be something I put in every one of my bathrooms. But basement bathrooms are really important to have ventilation. We also put a timer switch on this, which also really uh, makes sure that when you're taking a shower, that stays on for the 60 minutes and gets all that moisture out of there. Insulation and drywall, we actually did spray foam. It makes a lot of sense for a basement bathroom because moisture issues are always an issue on foundations. So if you did spray foam, you can seal that block, uh, basically creating a vapor barrier plus insulation. And that really uh, you know, will prohibit or should prohibit any leakage that would come and possibly create any mold damage. So if you're doing a basement renovation, like a complete one, I would highly recommend uh, trying to figure out how you can go ahead and, and just do everything with spray foam. Uh, I'll, that's what definitely what I'll be doing in the future on any of my flips or other renovations. It just makes a lot of sense because you're sealing that block and you're not gonna have any water issues coming in. Um, cement board waterproofing, if you saw the other live streams, we went over that. We did the Ardex 8 plus 9 and good old cement board, which really created a nice rock solid uh, installation and then the last live stream we were had you know make sure you go back in the video history as well but we did uh, about things about the tile sequence that my favorite thin sets thin set really makes a big difference uh, for any DIY or contractor trying to do tiling uh, if you have a lot of pot life you know the time that that thin set can sit in the bucket and you can still use it uh, the better off you'll be because you do need time for all these cuts so getting into the cutting this is what we're going to be discussing tonight, but I just have a small video on the latest uh, towel saw that I got. And, uh, you know, you probably, if you guys are watching social media, probably see a lot of people using this saw. So I want to give you my thoughts on that once we watch this little short tutorial. But this, I, I did the entire bathroom uh, basically with the grinder, this tabletop. And really this was primarily helpful for cutting multiple pieces at the same size. And then I also had to do some miters on it for going around my recessed niche. So this really was a, I mean, I have to be honest, this was a very, very simple bathroom to tile. For one, it was all ceramic tile and ceramic is one of the easiest ones to actually um, cut and get into place. But as you can see, I, ha I don't have any borders. Uh, it's just basically three tiles on either side and then four on the back. I had obviously had to cut all those rows, but that's where this tabletop saw came into being very helpful because I was able to call it, cut multiple tiles at once to, um, you know, basically fit in this whole back area of the, uh, the shower. And then, you know, obviously we did the ceiling as well, which is never fun. It's really actually kind of miserable. Um, thin setting tile on the ceiling, but it definitely gave a nice look. So just keep this in mind that this was actually a very simple um, 
you know, type of project when it comes to the tile design, especially when you're doing a stacked tile. So let me show you the uh, IQ saw in action here. And it's just like a one minute video, but I'll show you what we did here for the 45s. Let me shrink this down a little bit here. Okay, so let me get myself out of the way here. But yeah, hey guys, um, yeah, okay, well, we, got, we got the chat in here. So Facebook and YouTube, we are live stream on both platforms. So hey, leave your questions in the, in the comments. I'd love to talk to you, more of you about your own projects and maybe problems you're having with, with cutting tile. So yeah, let's watch this little one minute video about the, the IQ saw. Okay, so I got a new tabletop saw and this is actually a dry saw which I'm really excited to use. Never really used one of these before. I've been seeing them out on the market, but having water and not being able to work within your space is always problematic. And so this little tabletop is gonna be perfect for these little three by 12s. So we'll see how it goes, but what's really great about it that I could already see is that you can easily move this guide to different locations. So it already have one inch, two inch, three inch. So we're gonna be cutting two inch pieces. So that's gonna be really make it easy. And then you do have an adjuster here so that if you needed smaller pieces. But that little feature right there is just gonna make it so easy to be able to reference what I need. So let's go rip down uh, four of these pieces for our first row. So I do have some chips here, but to be fair, I haven't really broken in the blade yet. This is a brand new blade and any new blade takes a, a little bit of time for um, that blade to wear out. So we'll see how things progress, but really it doesn't really matter on this first row because we're gonna have that pebble stone tile meaning up to it. Okay, so as you can see, um, that really has almost no dust. I mean, I really, it was pretty impressive. When it comes to being dustless, I was really shocked that it can do that well. Now you do get a little bit of grains that fly off the bigger chunks, but uh, like there's literally no smoke. And if it does start smoking where you had a little bit of dust, it's primarily because your tray needs to be cleaned out or you have to, they have a, um, it's basically a, um, uh, a HEPA vac system on it. So it has a, a cartridge on it and you just turn it to clean it out a little bit. So if you're getting any type of dust, it's because the, the filter is clogged and you just need to spin it. You don't have to take it out or anything. You just have to spin it. And then maybe you have your tray that's too full. But um, this that is the primary, um, really the biggest thing that's so helpful with this is having that little, uh, uh, what do you call it? The guide that is like set at like one inch, two inch. I really like the way that was created because you could, you know, most of the time that's what I am doing. I'm only cutting two inches off or I'm, I'm in the inter in increments of one inch. But the way that the, uh, the, 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 the guide worked is that you can s thread it to where you bring it out to the accurate measurement. So if you needed an inch and a quarter, you just, you know, basically rotate it clockwise until you bring that out further to be able to do that. So I really was pleased with that. I always hated uh, some of these tabletops that have uh, the guides that don't stay square. I mean, because it really makes it miserable to work with. You know, if you guys ever used one of the original towel saws, like the MK saws, uh, the tabletop saws, some of them have like really cheap fences on them and are just really miserable because they don't stay square and then you're getting off cuts. But this thing really, uh, the way it's designed with that tabletop that kind of moves, I thought was really awesome as well. Now the chipping, I haven't gotten, you know, be fair, this is my, my first job ever even using this. And I would say the biggest thing about it is, is that it's super convenient. Um, if I was a new contractor that was uh, getting into this game, this probably, I mean, I'll be honest, this would not be the towel saw for you. I don't think any, I haven't tried out their other saws. I, ha I have them in my garage and I'm gonna try them out. I just think they're, um, you know, they're, they're fairly costly. Uh, and, I mean, this tabletop I think is really one of the most convenient ones. Like if, um, but it, I guess what I'm saying is that as a contractor starting out, you know, you need something that's gonna be able to do absolutely everything for you. So right now, 
this thing's not going to be able to cut glass. They don't, they're, they're supposed to be coming out with a blade that will cut it. Um, but I also can tell just at this point, so we'll see over time, but I don't think this is going to have uh, the accuracy of cutting without having any chips on it. Um, like the wet saw does, you know, they, the, 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 we'll get into the type of saws that I've been primarily using all, all of my years of contracting. Um, but I just, I have a feeling that you probably are never going to be able to get, like if I wanted to cut this tile, you know, to have come right up to my Schluter edging or my metal edging, there's just no way it wasn't going to happen. There was too many chips that were coming off on it. So, but to be fair, I haven't really put any really hard, dense porcelain on it. I have probably haven't really worn in the blade totally, but I still don't think you can really uh, completely get rid of, you know, basically being one-on-one -on -one compared to a wet saw to this. Uh, th like I said, this is primarily just really convenient because I'm able to stick this in the space that I'm at and I'm able to just run a bunch of uh, continuous cut. So let me get it, let me get on my course here because I have a little bit more of the features highlighted on things. And then obviously you saw at the beginning of the video about all the different um, types of uh, tools that we have. So we're going to get into that as well uh, that really help out. So I'm going to give you some advice for the, the new contractor jumping into this on like what would I buy if I was a new contractor and I only had so much money? I spent all my money on a new truck and I couldn't afford uh, all the tools that I really wanted. You know, this, I, sometimes you forget, like I'm, I'm almost 45 years old now and uh, you know, I got my dump trailer, I got my F-250, I got like all these tools. Now a lot of them are completely worn out. Like a lot, I get a lot of people making fun of me because I have thin set all over my grinders and I am hard on things, there's no doubt about it. Um, but, uh, you know, it takes many, many jobs to be able to afford all the, the equipment that you need to be able to do this stuff efficiently. Like, you know, th these, um, these Milwaukee uh, grinders that have, are the brushless ones, I mean, you're talking a good $300 for this thing. And then if you really want a, a good battery, I mean, this is only the five, yeah, this is a five amp battery. If you really want to have a long lasting one, get the nine amp battery, but those things are like 200 bucks. So you're talking almost $500 just for one of these grinders. Um, and you're not even including the blade yet at that point. And, um, you know, I have two of these to make it convenient because I like to have one with a grinding wheel like this. And then I have another one that has a, just a standard type of blade. Um, I'll show you what I have on that. But having two grinders, that's over, you know, that's like $1,000 if you want to get the good batteries. Um, so you know, getting into the towel industry can be very, very expensive. And again, I mean, I was really happy with this thing. I thought this was awesome, but this just wouldn't be my first purchase. It, I just definitely don't feel like this would be something that I could um, totally get behind on. You know, this isn't going to like solve everything for you. This is just super convenient. So yeah, I think retail is like 500, it says $549 on Amazon. Amazon's always a rip off. I probably wouldn't purchase it from there. Um, but yeah, it's roughly around 500 bucks, but it's great. What I really am excited to use this for is shower floors where, you know, because one of the big problems by cutting shower floors is if it gets wet, it can, you know, your, your mesh, your, the towel can come off of your mesh and then uh, it cause problems. And then if your towel is wet, sometimes that could be a bond breaker to your actual tile and thin set. So you always have to wipe off anything that you cut through a wet saw and you know this would be great i could just like literally have this in that little 32 square foot bathroom and be able to cut my shower floor tile and do this immediately so there you know and then backsplashes you know this would be great for backsplashes now again if you have a, a backsplash with glass in it you're not going to be able to do this but um there's a lot of small projects that this would be like perfect for so uh you know so i'm definitely not a salesman of uh iq I, i'm not hopefully um, you know, I'm just giving you my, my honest opinion about what I've seen so far. I have a bunch of other, other equipment I'm going to be testing out, but at this point, this is a great luxury item to have as a contractor, but it, it wouldn't be my first choice. If, it, if it, I was getting into the towel industry, this would be kind of hard to, to do a lot of different things. You want to have something that does absolutely everything for you. And you don't have any question of whether you're going to be able to get a nice quality job out of it. So. But yeah, I mean, I was just basically getting chips and you'll hear this from a lot of other contractors as well that, uh, you know, this thing is still chipping tiles and not making them perfect. But hey, a lot of times that's not, you don't really need everything to be perfect. This first row of tile was going to have pebble stone 
meeting right up against it. So it wasn't gonna, you know, even if there was a chip there, it didn't even matter. A lot of times in the corners of your shower, it doesn't matter there either because you're caulking that corner. So you're never gonna see it. Uh, it's just areas like around your recessed niche and, um, you know, obviously other exposed areas that really matter. Uh, so these little tiny, you know, in, inconsistencies didn't really make a difference in this bathroom renovation. But if you want to get a saw, that's actually uh, probably the workhorse that will do everything for you. Uh, it, it would be the DeWalt. And I say that because I've owned a bunch of other saws. Like I remember when I first started out in 2008, um, I had a, uh, well, they, Rigid used to make a really awesome wet saw. And that's what I started out with. And it was a, it was a monster. It, it, it was just like this DeWalt had a great stand on it that everything collapsed in together and you're able to move around kind of very similar to the new IQ saw that has um, the bigger one because it has a stand that kind of does the same thing turns into like a dolly uh, but that rigid saw was just uh, a beast you know I had that for a good five years uh, it was heavy as hell you know I think it weighed probably 150 pounds wheel that thing around so you couldn't really bring it into a bedroom upstairs you're always running down the stairs to, to go use it um, and then I saw, you know, on contractortalk.com, uh, before they had Facebook and all this stuff, they had, uh, some guys that were talking about the Immer saws. So Immer has, I don't even know if they still, I'm sure they still are selling stuff, but anyways, um, yeah, let me see if they have Immer. So the Immer saws, there was a bridge saw. Uh, hmm. let me see if they have a, uh, Im an Immer, let me see, Immer bridge. I don't know if Contractors Direct has that. Oh, yeah, they do. Okay. So here it is. So this is basically what I had purchased. So, yeah, look at that price tag. $2,700. Now, that, I mean, eight years ago was definitely not that costly, but I remember it costing me a fortune. I probably paid $1,500 for it, honestly. But I thought that this thing was going to do everything I could ever want to do, and I uh, was greatly, greatly disappointed. Um, you know, I did use it for for. A couple of years uh, but one of the problems I was having is that the, the, the motor just had this slight vibration and maybe there was something wrong with the saw, saw that I had but it had this like slight vibration that would chip porcelain tiles and that's really what most of you're gonna probably have a problem with is porcelain tiles when you're getting in the cutting stone or this nice ceramic that I have in this bathroom it's really really simple uh, like I said cutting ceramic is really easy uh, because it's soft and it doesn't take a lot to really cut it. So I never really had a problem with that. You know, and, and for a while there, I was doing subway tile showers like it was going out of style. It's like everybody here in Pittsburgh just wanted the old vintage look that they had. And they just wanted me to do subway tiles. So, you know, I had this like $1,500 saw uh, for subway tile that, you know, it, it worked for that. But it was totally unnecessary. But I was greatly disappointed with it is all I'm saying. And I, and I ended up going back and then I ended up buying the uh, DeWalt saw. And this DeWalt saw had basically carried me through for probably the next 10 years. I mean, the one, this one right here, I've probably done um, 25 showers on it, maybe more than that. But it's, it's a beast. It's something that uh, you should be able to be able to cut everything. It's really the, ta the tabletop that slides is really well made and it's very square. And, um, you know, the water containment kind of sucks. That's one uh, miserable thing about it. That's what made me kind of attracted to that new IQ saw was that I get tired of the mess that this thing makes, even though that, you know, that's probably part of the user uh, that's creating this mess. But, uh, you know, it, it, that is the biggest the problem is just how messy this saw is. And it's heavy and it's like really cumbersome to move around. And again, like this isn't something you're going to bring up somebody's stairs and set up in their master bedroom because it's just going to be too much of a mess. So again, that's where that convenience of this dry saw uh, really makes a difference. And if you had a, you know, you know, I hate to say that, but if you had this on the site, then you'd at least be able to cut those nice L cuts and do a lot of the other intricate work that you needed here. But for, uh, what was it, um, seven, 900 bucks? I think it's 950 bucks for the uh, DeWalt saw. Let me see, I had it up here. Yeah, so it says add the cart to find the price. 950 bucks that's a I mean you can't I don't think you can beat that so that's my recommendation if you're a new contractor trying to get into this or you just don't 
you know, I mean, this, that's just definitely going to be the most dependable saw for you, I think. Because I had the Immer and I had a Ramondi one as well. So that Immer is bridge saw. I was attracted to those bridge saws because you're able to cut really long and big tile. Uh, and uh, I had a Ramondi as well, which was like another $2,000 uh, bridge saw. And it still, it still had that same chipping issue on some of that, that hard porcelain tiles. But some of them are going to be really problematic. But that's where also getting a, um, a good snapper helps with uh, some of these porcelain tiles. That's primarily, you know, when, the, when I'm doing 12 by 24s, I'm using the snappers for most of that because it's going to give you the cleanest cut. Because even, even at DeWalt, with a good blade, I should mention that, that's one other thing I would spend some extra money on. So you get the, you get the DeWalt saw if you're first starting out, and don't use the DeWalt blade. Forget that blade. That blade doesn't, you know, that blade's crap. Um, and I mean, you could, it'll do su subway tile and ceramics and stuff like that. But if you wanted to do porcelain, get one of these Montelit DNA blades. I've had this blade on this saw right here probably for the last 10 showers maybe maybe even longer than that and i've done actually you know i was flipping home so i was doing kitchens and backsplashes and a lot of, i mean a lot of tile on this and it's been the same dna blade it's been the same blade for all that time and it's still grit it cuts terrifically you know i'm cutting glass with it i'm cutting uh, hard porcelains with it i'm obviously cutting stone and marble with it as well uh, but it is is a hefty price. I mean, this is off of Amazon, so again, it's kind of a ripoff. Um, but you're probably looking at a good 200 bucks for this blade. But that would be my recommendation for any new contractor: get a Dewalt saw because it's going to be the most versatile saw out there, and get a really good porcelain blade so that you can do all those uh, intricate cuts. The biggest, you know, most showers, the, the only area that really matters the most uh, is around the recessed niche. That's you know the L cut. That's that's where this really helps out. The rest of it would be with a snap cutter. Now these snap cutters aren't cheap either, but if you're doing a lot of flooring, uh, basically I don't, when I, when I do a, a bathroom floor, it's usually just the snapper and a grinder for some of the cuts that go around like a corner of a room or something like that. I don't even pull out the wet saw for a floor unless it's a stone floor, uh, unless you're doing like slate or marble or something like that, because then you have to use that. You don't have any choice other than the use a wet saw to cut for that. I mean, or the dry saw, I guess you could say. If you wanted, if you had your IQ, you could probably cut the, the stone just fine. But uh, the snappers really do have their place. Uh, again, because it's like they cut the porcelain so much nicer. So this is a Montelit Master Puma. This is a, uh, basically, this one goes up to 25 inch tile. So a 24 inch tile. So, you know, a, tw a 12 by um, 24 inch tile would be great. Uh, on this now that's so again that's kind of a rip on off on Am Amazon let's see what the contractor direct has master Puma uh, yeah so a 24 inch yeah look how much less that is Amazon is such a rip off 425 bucks so that's still I mean no doubt that's an expensive snap cutter but once you use one of these you'll never go back um, it really creates a really, really nice cut, um, you know, and unfortunately, majority of the towel cutters, the snap cutters do have to be pretty decently made. I mean, you buy the ones at Home Depot, um, like the QEP garbage ones. I mean, you can do things with it, but if you have a nice, like high gloss porcelain tile, um, it's probably not going to cut it very well. And you have to be careful. Some of the stuff at Home Depot, like I was mentioning in my uh, intro there, uh, some of those tiles are just really terrible to cut. So let me see if I can find. Um, yeah, so there, there it is. I mean, I got thin set all over it, obviously. But uh, the one tile that uh, I installed, let me see where that's at. This stuff right here. This stuff is miserable to cut. Um, this is a really dense, hard porcelain. It's got a, like a very high gloss sheen on it. And it doesn't matter what you cut this thing with. It's not going to be perfect, but the snapper is your best chance to cut this stuff. So um, sometimes, like, the people that do showers and they go and buy cheap tile, um, it's going to make it harder for you as the installer. Uh, there's this one 
I, I wish I had a picture of it. I probably do have it somewhere. But there's a marble look-alike 12 by 24 that they sell at Lowe's, I think it was. That is the most miserable stuff you can ever try to install because no matter, even with the snap cutter, you're always like chipping right off of the edge. You can even see on this one here, I'm kind of chipping it off right here at the corner and you'll have that problem with that on a lot of these. It's so, so frustrating. So even with a good snapper, sometimes you can't do that, but that's where, you know, these other um, basically polishing pads and stuff like that will help make that kind of a lot of that stuff go away. So you kind of have to, uh, get a little bit creative or get some additional tools, I guess you could say, to uh, deal with some of this cheap stuff that's out there. So unfortunately, like, um, you know, the people that don't have a lot of money to go to the, the, the good towel stores and pay $7 a square foot or $6 a square foot uh, are buying the stuff from Home Depot that is $1.50 and it's just miserable for the towel installer. So that's just kind of the way, uh, the way it is. Um, but a good snapper, um, it's not definitely a must, must have as a contractor i wouldn't say but it's definitely uh something that when you're getting into some of these 12 by if you're doing a lot of 12 by 24s and stuff like that it's definitely going to help you out and if you're doing a lot of floors and stuff like definitely worth having so it's kind of a you know you kind of have to get into that eventually but you can do almost everything with just your wet saw and a grinder for touching up things um and as you can see, I have this little tiny manual cutter. This is made by Master or um, Montelit as well. They have a little, it's called the Mini Puma. And this cuts like, you know, this is nice to have right on your tub surround. So like for subway tiles and backsplashes and stuff, it's like very convenient to be able to have there and just kind of correct your cuts. But, you know, I'll probably have that IQ saw sitting behind me from now on for some of that stuff. So, but, it, you know, it def definitely has its... Uh, purposes and and does help out because it's you know cutting with a manual cutter like for subway towel and cutting you know basically 25 cuts that are the same size on these kind of sucks i mean they do have a guide that holds it at the right space but it's just more time consuming running it through a saw really makes it a lot easier and then um this is another item that i've gotten over the years that because i've gotten a lot of complaints about dust in the home so, uh, you know, again, it's just like all the times of running down the steps and going outside to cut on the wet saw or to do a grinding cut, it's really uh, wears you down. And over time, it's just, you just not, you're not as productive because you're just, you know, you don't get as much done. So you're, being able to do most of the towel cutting or the, like at least the, the scribe cutting in the shower, especially like right on that first row, it's very nice to have one of these, um, saws with the dust extractor uh it really has changed and, and made things a lot easier and as you can see you probably can't even notice what brand that is because it's covered in thin set i do definitely need to get a new uh grinder but i just get the corded ones that i mean they're like 80 90 bucks so it actually was originally a makita but i like the makita one because it has a uh, paddle switch so you know again so if you're a new contractor the dewalt saw a good blade and then if you don't want to get the, the cordless and spend, you know, $600 on a cordless uh, grinder, you know, that because that is a kind of a, a, it's a novelty item. You don't need it to be cordless. Just get one of these Makitas. So 90 bucks for that thing. That's pretty dang reasonable. I don't think you get much better than that. But having the paddle switch gives you a lot more control. And then, um, and then this is my favorite blade for that. I would buy this with this as well. So this is the, the Montelit DNA blade. Now there are many other manufacturers coming out with uh, very similar types of products, but I really like all these diamonds that are around here. It kind of, it almost acts as like a, a grinding wheel plus uh, a cutter. So unlike uh, the cheap DeWalt's that, you know, or other stuff you get at the box stores. So DeWalt um, um, diamond blade these things are just like smooth rims and they don't have so like this typical one right here this x yeah xpv4 whatever four and a half inch 30 bucks um this is what i normally had started out with and it does all right i mean it, it can get the job done but it's nowhere near what this dna blade can do i mean it's um oh, i have to go back and time on that one but it's these smooth rims. I mean, they just they don't they bind up, especially if you're using it on like marble 
or other types of tile. It does all right on porcelain and stuff like that, but it's not the blade that you want. This, this with all the diamonds around the edges really makes a big difference. So you're talking about another 25 bucks on top of that. But I, you know, some of the, the grinders that I have this on, I've probably done just the same amount of showers, probably 12, 15 showers with the same blade on it. And it's still working great. And it, like I said, it's really rips through the porcelain really well. But if you're, you know, there's a lot of different manufacturers out there making blades like this now, but Montelit has uh, really never let me down. I've always um, really been um, a big fan of their tools. Pretty, you know, premium price on a lot of their stuff, but always really well made. But here's the dust shroud. Now these dust shrouds do suck. I mean, I, I don't like them, but they, they, you know, obviously are there for a purpose. They just suck out all that dust out of the room. But, uh, you know, 100 bucks. But the problem is, is that you can't see the accurate, you know, the actual towel cuts that you're making. That's usually the biggest problem. So this is just more for just touch-up cuts that I'm doing within the bathroom. And I'm not, like, super accurate on. It's just a, like, you know, they're perfect for doing flooring. Maybe that first uh, tile that you're setting on your up above your shower floor, you can kind of use that blade and scribe cut and kind of you know a lot of times on your shower floor right at the edges of your corners of your shower you have a lot of build up from depends on what kind of waterproofing you use but a lot of times it slopes up in the corners a little bit which is good because water will drain out of those corners um, but that's you know that's where this helps a lot you can just kind of do it right in your space you're not running down the steps to to do it but um, yeah th these work really great along with a shop vac now you're going to need a, a shop vac that actually has the plug port on it so that when you use the grinder you know it's turning on the shop back so the none of those are cheap um this is actually a pretty reasonable price one to five point eight is it like 280 bucks so this again this this is a luxury item having this in the bathroom it just speeds up my time and kind of keeps down the dust uh that's one thing i'm really trying to get better at because you know, I've been doing this for so long and inhaling all this dust I know is really bad for me. And there's more and more um, outcomes of people, you know, really getting sick from uh, inhaling this stuff. So I, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm kind of fearful of the damage I might have already done to my lungs to begin with. Um, but anyways, a luxury item. But again, new contractor, the Walt saw, a CGX uh, or a, a, a DNA blade for the, t the towel saw. A Makita saw with a DNA blade. These are all in my course, by the way. You can, you know, I have all the links here, obviously. That's what I'm going through here. Now, another great aspect to have is this little grinder um, blade here. This is the Montelit STL blade. And so, as you can see, this, is, this has diamonds all around the edges. So, it is like a grinding wheel. This really helps out to be able to grind down the back of tiles. Say, if you're doing 45-degree miters, you know, this is really great for that as well. Um, really, I always have one on uh, on a blade or on a on a grinder just to touch things up. You can do actually all your cuts with this as well. It's just a it's a pretty fat blade, so it's not really necessarily for cutting everything, but it, it's more for shaping. Again, this would be another great one for that first row of tile, and you're just trying to scribe cut. Uh, against that shower floor, but that's a really helpful tool to get to get you out of a pinch on that. Now the Montelit STL blade is expensive. I mean the Montelit brands are really really pricey, 125 bucks for that thing, but the thing will last you a really long time. But I, I actually bought one. The one that's actually on my grinder right now is this Amazon knockoff, and I tell you what, it's almost. It's I wouldn't say it's as as good as the Montelit, but Damn, I mean, I could pretty much do everything with this thing as well. I and mean, I don't really notice too much of a difference other than just the fact that it doesn't grind as quickly, probably because it doesn't have as many diamonds on it. But for 25 bucks, you know, you could get four of these, five of these things for the price of a Montelit. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, if you were just doing maybe one or two showers a year, maybe you don't need to spend all that money on a Montelit. You can just buy one of these and, and do well. So I... Um, you know, unfortunately, some of these things that uh, come out here on Amazon and other manufacturer making, they're making them just as good in a lot of ways and just a heck of a lot cheaper. Uh, one accessory that I would recommend getting for your uh, grinder, though, is one of these quick release things. Uh, these really are kind of makes it easy to go back for, especially if you have one grinder 
definitely worth the 15 bucks. And actually, I should just add this to the cart right now because mine broke the other day. Everything of mine is breaking these days because I've been just so hard on it. So I added that to the cart. Um, and hey, keep in mind, I do have an Amazon store if you guys want to go over to that, uh, that you can check out most of these tools in here. But you have to be careful with Amazon. Some of this stuff is a complete ripoff and not really worthwhile. Um, but um, yeah, this is another blade that I would have in my tool bucket. If you're doing a lot of towel work and different things, this Montelit Squadro blade. This is really great for backsplashes. It's only three and three eighths inch wide, but what's really awesome about it is how thin it is. It's a very, very thin blade. So it's really easy to do turns on it and doing like um, corner turns or cutting out the, the holes for the, 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 the toilet flanges. Perfect for that. But what's really great is you could set your, say if you had a new build on um, your um, backsplash, say if you're doing it, somebody did a new kitchen and you're just in there to do the backsplash and they don't have any of the outlets in the boxes yet. And you, you could basically towel over that and then use this thing to cut out the, uh, the, the outlet box afterwards, which can actually be really a, a big time saver uh, now, it all depends on the kind of the, where the boxes are and stuff. But anyways, it's like these are really great for being able to cut straight into like a three and a half inch box because it's such a small blade that it allows you to really, um, you know, not overcut in, uh, an electrical box. So that's one of the great aspects of it. But this is definitely something that is nice to have on hand for uh, many different reasons. It's just nice to have uh, multiple types of blades for different types of situations. So I've been ignoring the chat. Sorry if everybody, um, if anybody's been chatting here and I'm kind of going on and on and on, but I did want to get through a lot of the different things that I have on here. So um, let me see here. All right, so I got a lot of YouTube comments on here. Well, I'll have to start going through some of it a little bit later on here, but thanks for uh, <laughs> hearing me out on this stuff. So anyways, um, another tool that is very helpful is these glass snips. If you're doing a lot of glass, some of this stuff is really faded out of style, I think, in a lot of ways. Like this, uh, this type of linear glass was super, super popular 10 years ago. But I'm not sure as many people are doing this anymore. But the towel nippers were really great for stuff like this. I mean, I did this arch niche. Uh, it makes it really quick to be able to, to go around that. Polishing pad kit. These are great for these big, large tiles. Um, I only really started getting into polishing pads um, once I started doing big format tile like this, because even with the snapper or the wet saw, uh, if you're doing like a big tile like this on the shower floor, you really need to polish that down to kind of keep that from being sharp. Uh, it really, uh, it could be definitely, you know, porcelain can get really, really sharp. And then, you know, it also, the polishing pads really help kind of cut down any of those chips and nips that you get off the edges. So having a, a, a polishing pad kit is really helpful. These things aren't very expensive either. You can get like a whole slew of them for 28 bucks. So that's pretty reasonable. It's good to have on your tool kit as well. Uh, or you could just use a, the, the diamond hand pads. Uh, these things are tremendous for anything, like anything that you're gonna go against like a Schluter edge, it's nice to be able to use these diamond pads. Very, very, um, you know, just because uh, the Schluter edges are really unforgiving uh, because you're just basically butting the tile right up to it. So if you have any chips on that tile right along that metal edging, it's going to look awful. And, you know, one way to address that. Now, I, in this particular shower, I made sure that I was using factory edge tiles, like the full 12 inch tiles at the entrance of my shower. So I didn't have any issues with any cuts here. But if I, if I needed that towel to be like six inches or something like that. I had to cut every single one of them and then I would probably use a polishing pad to finish them off to make it nice and smooth. So, and, and if you're doing like glass tile, you know, you want to kind of hone that down a little bit. So the, the, um, the hand pads, polishing pads are just definitely another tool to have in your tool bucket as well. Now in my course, I also have a whole bunch of other items that I recommend and suggest to keep you organized with, um, you know, whatever you're getting. Obviously, when you're doing a, a bathroom renovation, like you have to pick and choose what's gonna make the most sense for you to purchase because you can get out of control and, you know, it could, it could, it could cost you more than what it, uh, you know, what it would almost hire to have somebody else come out and do it for you, you know? So if you're doing this as like 
kind of like to save yourself money or you can't find contractors, you do have to be kind of, you know, aware of uh, what you're purchasing. But I, I guess in some sense, I'm just trying to look out for some of the new contractors getting into this. Cause I honestly, I, I, I sometimes I feel really bad because I couldn't really imagine trying to start out in this environment uh, with how much things cost to start out. Um, it, it's kind of a bit overwhelming and bathroom remodeling requires so many tools. And uh, to think about that, because I mean, you kind of need a truck. You absolutely need a pickup truck. Uh, even the F-150s are $40,000 now. So um, what a hefty price to have to be paying every month uh, just to get around. And then, you know, a tool trailer is, is definitely something that's going to make it convenient. I mean, where, where I think you make money as a contractor is, is efficiency. The, the quicker you can get the job done, the more money you make and the more bathrooms you can do to be able to make more money. So, you know, efficiency is everything. So having the tools make you more efficient, uh, having that, that the tool trailer where you have all your equipment right there and you're not running to Home Depot because you didn't have, you know, something that uh, was going to make it, the job easier. Anytime that you have to run around, the more money it's costing you to get it done and the less, the less you're actually getting done. So um, I guess, yeah, I guess all I'm saying is I'm really trying to um, trying to give some advice for the, the new cow, con, towel contractor that's getting into this and, and try to, to make some smart moves on what they're purchasing. Because, you know, you see all this stuff on Instagram, you see all these different tools out there. You're seeing me use these new dry cut saws and everybody using them. And I just, um, you know, they're great so far. I mean, I, you know, maybe, maybe I'll be sell, saying something different in two months after I've done like three or four showers with this thing. Um, but as of right now, it's, it's just not going to be, rep, you know, replace my DeWalt. My DeWalt's still going to be my fundamental uh, backup saw. I probably, if I, you know, I'm going to be doing another client job here soon. I'm probably going to have this on my trailer just in case I need to make that, that accurate cut for, the, you know, the, the, um, the wall tower or whatever I'm doing. I just don't want to, at this point, I just don't want to be left without it because uh, if I can't make that good cut, then, you know, it only takes one bad cut in a shower to completely ruin your reputation because that's what the client's going to look at and they're just going to be like, how did you screw that up? Or, or, you know, lippage. You know, if you have one tile that's sunken in or sticking out, like you have a border that goes across the top of your shower and it's indented, you know, that client's going to pick that out and it just, you know, it makes everything look bad. So, um, my handy services on uh, Facebook. Thanks for, thanks for your input. Appreciate it, man. So, um, yeah, so that's really going through uh, a lot of my towel cutting. I'll probably go on for a lot, lot longer on towel cutting because there's so many other additional things um, to really go over. I mean, a lot of it's technique and the way you go about doing things, uh, you know, like the, the shower niches and stuff. Those, those are all like, and that's really, you know, that's really where you guys really have to start. You have to charge the money to install this stuff so that you can build up an inventory of, uh, you know, tools and everything to be able to do this efficiently. You can't be doing a shower niche for 300 bucks. I know it might only take you two hours to put together, but all the equipment that it takes to make it actually look really nice is, is really, really costly. And, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, and unfortunately, like you just never know what tile, you know, the client is going to fall in love with and purchase. And so you have to be prepared for, all those types of products you know if it was just ceramic tile and marble and stone or something like that then you can be kind of set up uh pretty pretty easily but all the porcelains the glass tiles uh some of the you know some of these coatings they, they could just be very very difficult and you have to be prepared to be able to do them all so but you know keep it simple it, it really can't work out well like i said this is this was all ceramic tile uh, and I did, you know, I did do everything on that new IQ saw, so I was pretty happy with that. So, um, let me see if there's anybody else here. Have you ever had polished, um, had to polish scratch tile? If so, what is the best way? You know, I actually, uh, Prentice Drew on, um, YouTube asked me that question. So I actually did have a really bad experience with some high polished marble and, uh, you know how they always mention to you uh, when you're using um, uh, some of these grouts that you should test an area before you commit to using it, like on 
on natural stone or, or polished stone. Well, this, this one woman had this really, really like super high sheen marble and, and really the, the high sheen, it's not like they coat it with something that is actually the machine work of basically polishing that marble that makes it that smooth and, and like glass. Well, I ended up using a product called um, Quartz Lock, which was a, um, a, a pre-mixed grout. I was, I was in love with it for many, many years. I used it on like all my bathrooms for five or six years uh, because I thought it was just the greatest stuff in the world until I found out later that people were really having a hard time getting it back to the original color. They weren't able to, you know, they just had a hard time cleaning it. And it was gritty. It did have some grit to it. So, but I ended up doing a bathroom floor and I ended up using white quartz lock and once I was done and I kind of cleaned everything off the, 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 the there's a window in the bathroom and it would shine off the floor and you can see scratches everywhere uh, and there was really nothing um, I did not have the expertise to be able to get that polishing out I, I tried I really did but I ended up calling a company that kind of refinishes tile and marble and they came out with their really good um, polishing pad. I, I honestly wish I would have stayed there and, and watched them and seen what they did. But they, they did fix it. The grout didn't, it didn't affect the grout or anything like that. They were able to just come in and basically polish the entire bathroom. It looked brand new, but I, I didn't make any money on the job because I think it was like 600 bucks to polish it. I only charged like $300 to install it. <laughs> but it was a way out. I was, you know, it was nice to have a, an exit plan because the last thing I wanted to do was tear up all the marble and have to pay for all the marble. So um, polishing a scratch towel, especially, I don't know, man. I, I'm, that's, I'm definitely not an expert on that, unfortunately. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with polishing any of that stuff out. I never really had much luck with that. Um, and if it's stone... Yeah, I think if it's stone, you can actually be a little bit um, more daring with that. But if it's like a, a marble or a, um, a porcelain tile that's scratched, I don't know. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get that out. But I, I just probably wouldn't go at it with a polishing pad. Um, I'd be a little bit afraid on the grinder. I feel like the grinders would have too much RPMs on them to do it. They're great for, you know, like what I was demonstrating with, you know, going along the edges of a porcelain tile kind of shape them up but going right on the face of it i don't feel comfortable with that yet so you know that's just my two cents um joshua white said i scuffed up some white gloss towel with the, the top of a shower door rail i buffed it out with a dremel in in polish okay so you actually used up straight up polish uh okay that's a good that's a good um thing good good word of advice there so so Josh White, I started this year. I'm doing handyman jobs on the side, just about to buy some towel gear. Yeah. So, Josh, like I was saying in this in this video, um, I think uh, my go-to's as a new contractor, even though it was, uh, you know, all this stuff is still costly, is the Dewalt saw, the the, the Montelet DNA blade, the porcelain blade, because it can do everything. Snap cutter if you're doing a lot of floors. If you're do, if you're able to do a lot of tile. Snap cutter definitely makes things nice and clean. It's still like a $500 tool. You, you probably don't need, absolutely need that, but it is nice. And then uh, getting a grinder. Just getting, you know, maybe you don't have to get the one that's cordless. The Makita works great. The paddle switch and get a good uh, CGX blade, grinder blade. Maybe get a couple of blades because you save some money on the tool. Get, you know, get, get one of these um, Amazon knockoff diamond blade so you know you'd probably be in what would that be so $200 uh, 1200 300 yeah I mean a little under two grand you pretty much have most of everything you need um, the snap cutter would, would would put you a little bit over you know but uh, yeah I, I don't know there, there's a lot of jobs I always said I just use a snap cutter and the grinder too you know there's a lot of tile jobs that, that's all I'll need because you know all your cuts are hidden in the corners um, you know, a lot of 12 by 24s, you, you know, it's, it's hard. Yeah. Sometimes it is. So, yeah. So, all right. Well, I think I'll call that an evening. I'm actually going to be out of town next week, so I won't be able to do a live stream. But when I get back, we're definitely going to go over a lot more about some of these different features I did in the shower as well. And uh, keep up these live streams because um, I think, you know, I think people are enjoying them, having them 
uh, helping people out and being able to communicate with you guys is great. So give me a thumbs up on this video and uh, I'll see you in the next, next one. Thanks guys.